Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Benjamin. I'm the pastor of the congregation. So first, we would like to uh, welcome everyone, and we hope that you can continue to join us. Um, first of all, if you don't have a Bible, can you please raise your hand, and our ushers in the back can um, lend you our Bible for today. So if you don't have a Bible, can you just keep your hand up if you want to have a Bible for today. Now, um, I want to uh, start by um, maybe make a kind of like a Two weeks ago, I talked about power of words or power of tongues, and uh, I share about how my prayers are sometimes very powerful. Now, I want to make a correction. I, I want to let everyone know I'm not special. Everyone's prayer is just as powerful. Okay, I want to make it very, very clear. I'm not more special than any one of you. Uh, any of you, if you make your prayer, and if you have a good relationship with God, and if your prayer is the right prayer that's pleasing to God, all of you, your, your prayer is just as powerful. Okay? I'm not any more special than any one of you. Okay? Um, now, let's continue on what we're we'll talking about today. So we have moved on to quarter number two. So throughout the year, we've been using Proverbs to talk about a lot of the, um, the topicals, um, topical passage. So this year, again, we are doing a little bit something different than the, uh, the past years that we have more topical sermons. And we're moving on to quarter number two, which we'll be talking about life tricks and tips. And today, we'll be talking about anger and anger management. Now, how many of you have watched the fight last night? Oh, okay, well, not a lot, okay. Um, I had an opportunity that a good friend invited me to, to, watch, uh, to watch the fight. And, uh, um, you know, it's kind of difficult to watch the fight of the century than went home and prepare anger management. Okay. I was like, you know, after I came out, I feel like I, I, I want to punch someone for some reason. <laughs> now, I want to start by, um, by asking you these questions. Okay. So first of all, this is just for you and, and you only. I'm not going to ask you to share, but uh, you can answer it. You know, on a scale of 1 to 10, are you a mild temper person or are you a hot temper person? 对你来说你是很容易发脾气还是你是很温和的 okay. So you can pick your number okay. uh, You don't have to share You just have to yell out loud No, just kidding okay. um, Now, even if you are mild tempered The next question is How much inner anger are you harboring or suppressing? Because sometimes maybe you're kind of mild on the outside But Right, so what is your scale of the inner anger that you're harboring? Because today, that's the, that's the uh, yeah, don't poke each other, okay, to, to <laughs> generate more anger. Okay, all right, so today, we want to talk about anger management. We're going to use Proverbs to talk about this important topic. I also suggest that some of the things I I'll talk about is coming from this book by Gary Chapman. Uh, it's called Anger, and uh, I think it's a great book. Okay, it's one of the New York bestsellers. Um, so um, if, you, you know, if you have opportunity, I suggest that you can go on Amazon to purchase this book and read it. Now, anger is everywhere in your life and in my life. Right, it can happen at school, can happen at church, can happen in your family, uh, with friends, with your children, right, at your workplace, um, when you're driving, right, I get angry a lot when I drive, okay. <laughs> uh, when you're shopping, maybe sometimes when you go to, even when you go to restaurants or when you watch the news, when you read someone's blog, when you read online posts, or, or maybe when you're trying to fix your computer, right, or, you know, when someone makes a comment. Anytime, anywhere, anger can happen because it's part of our life and it's, it's part of my life, right? Now, I have heard when Christians trying to explain our faith, our Christian faith, uh, a lot of times I hear people trying to explain the concept of sin. Uh, usually I hear people say this, you know what, we are all sinners. We may not kill someone or we may not steal, but... We tell lies, we get jealous, and we get angry. Those are our sins. I don't know if you have heard something similar to that. Okay, I hear people say that a lot. So our, our mentality a lot of times is this. Anger or be angry, it's a sin. It's something bad. 
How many of you have that thought that anger is a sin? Okay, few of you. Are you being honest to me? Okay. <laughs> now, though there are some verses that seem to back it up. For example, Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians 4, 4, 4, 4, it talks about, it says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all the, mal the, the malice. So a lot of times Christians are like this. Okay, I need to hold my anger. I cannot be angry. So Father, please tell me, please forgive me, I'm angry. Uh, but I'm still very angry, right? You know, a lot of times I think Christians, we want to, we think angry is a sin and we need to hold it because I cannot be angry because it's bad. Now, is that what the Bible teaches? Does the Bible teach us that angry or be, be angry or anger is a sin? Now, the same passage in Ephesians 4 verse 26, chapter 4, verse 26, it actually said, be angry and yet do not sin. So clearly, the Bible said you can be angry, but at the same time, it's not a sin. So we know that actually the biblical view is anger does not equal to sin. Because there is, a, there is a way that you can be angry, yet you're not sinning, right? It's very obvious. So today, the first point is I want to talk about what is anger? Where does anger come from? Now, by the way, uh, the, uh, the outline is in your um, bulletin, I have three outlines. And if you think any of the information is worth keeping, if you don't know, go visit our website. It's on the um, it's it's on the first page of the bulletin. And if you go on there, it has a link to all of our PowerPoints and uh, vid and uh, audio recording. So you don't have to take cell phone pictures. Okay, I put my PowerPoint on our church website every single week. Thank you. I know I'm I'm handsome, so thank you. Okay, all right now. So what's the biblical view of anger? Where does anger come from? If anger is not a sin, then what is anger? Actually, anger may be something positive. It may be something that is associated with God. Now, before you get angry at me, saying, Pastor Benjamin, how can you say that? How can you say ang anger is, you know, God? Let me explain. In fact, in the Bible, in Old Testament and New Testament combined, about 580 times the Bible mentioned the word anger or angry or wrath, fenu. And 439 of those, it's talking about God's anger or Jesus was being angry. Okay? And only 141 times it's about people getting angry. So the Bible said we are also created in God's image. So this is what I think the biblical view of anger. Unlike other negative things, lust, inluan, greed, tanxin, um, disobedience, bei ni, these are actions and thoughts that actually are a result of the fall. The fall. So Adam and Eve, after they sinned, they became part of our human characteristic. However, anger is different. When God made us, he gave us the ability to be angry. He gave us the capacity to be angry because we are created to be like him. Now, let me make it clear. I'm not suggesting that God is always angry. I'm not suggesting that God has this anger inside of him that he's ready to burst. Because our God is not an angry God, and I will touch on that more. But God has a capacity to be angry. When God sees evil, he experiences anger because God is holy. And it's actually God's logical response to injustice or to unrighteousness. Because he loves us so much, he wants the best for us. And because his holy and righteousness holy and righteous, it's his logical response when he sees injustice or unrighteousness. Um, 
there's a guy named Johnny. Um, he was in a tough spot in life, so he may, you know, he really need God's help. So he prayed to God. He said, God, please help me. Now, if you help me this time, and I'm going to make a promise to you that uh, I'm going to stop committing adultery. Okay? Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm willing to be punished by you if I commit adultery. And, you know, I'm afraid of water, so maybe if I do this again, uh, I'll just get drowned. So apparently God listened, listened to his prayers. By the way, this is a fake story. Okay, so, okay. It's not the correct theology, so don't pay attention to the theology. Now, apparently God listened to his prayer. Um, he, you know, he miraculously got out of his tight spot, and, uh, but, but Johnny was still unfaithful to his wife. Yet, nothing happened for many years, and he kind of forgot about it. Right. One day, he was, on, he was on the ocean, he was on a huge boat, on a cruise with a lot of people, and, and there's a huge storm, and it looks like the boat is sinking. And now he remembers his promise. It's like, so he is desperate, so he dropped to his knees and prayed, God, I know I'm a sinner, I know I deserve this, but look at all these passengers on this boat. They're very, very innocent. Please just spare our life okay, as a whole. So, so God, from the sky, came out a voice, Innocent. 你以为这么多年来我都闲着吗? 我好不容易把所有的人聚集在这个船上,多辛苦啊! <笑> now, the, this is just a joke, okay? The, there's nothing right about the idea. But, there's something that's kind of right. That God will have anger as a response when he sees his beloved children is doing something that they're not supposed to. Because God is love and God is holy. So the first time the Bible clearly mentioned that God was angry was in Exodus chapter 32. The background is this. So God has saved the Israelites. He delivered them from the Egyptian, crossed the Red Sea, right? He saved them. Now God's people, the Israelites, when they're worshiping, they made this idol, this golden calf, wow, this is the God that led us out of Egypt. And when God saw that, God was very angry, and God said, I am very angry. And the reason is very simple, that when they should have given credit to God, they gave the credit to this idol, right? So the thing is, they did something unrighteous, gong yi. Um, I don't know if you listened to my sermon before, but I define this. The biblical definition of righteousness is that you do something that you're supposed to do within your role. Just that's righteous. When you do outside of that, that's unrighteous. So anger, again, is a reaction to unrighteousness. Now, why does God allow you and I to be angry? Right? God can be angry, right? Why does God allow you to be angry or give you the capacity to be angry? Because God wants you to react to injustice. 上帝给你,给我,给每一个人都有能力当我们周围有不公义,有不公平的事情. So what is anger? Anger is actually a reaction when someone or some situation that violates your standard of righteousness. What should happen does not happen. For example, everyone has idea what should be and what should not be. And these standards can be put on your friends, your boss, your parents, your children, and you know, even strangers. Um, if you think honesty, 诚实, or sincerity is an important standard. When someone lied to you or when you feel someone is not sincere or genuine, you become angry because you think someone has violated that standard. If you think obedience is supposed to be there and when your children or when people work under you do not listen to you, you become angry because you think it should happen. When you think love or care, or giving, or caring is supposed to be there, but you don't receive that, sometimes you become angry because you're expected to be loved or to be giving. When you expect order, 秩序, to be there, if you think that's a standard, 你看到人, 
drive 在开车乱开 ，right? Driving habits, and that makes you angry because you expect certain order. Or when your children makes a big mess, you become angry because it violates your standard. When you think respect is supposed to be there, yet it is not. That's why teenagers feel that their parents do not respect them, and they become angry, right? Because they they have violated your standard of what should happen. For example, husband and wife. If you feel acceptance should be there, yet you feel that your spouse does not give you the right respect, or does not, or rejects you, and that's why you feel angry. So, angry is a response when someone violates your standard of righteousness. 你觉得有一个不公平或是不公义的事情 ，something unfair, something not supposed to happen, yet it happened. So that you have a response to it, and when that response enter, 我们叫做 low self conscious， 就是你觉得自我知觉比较低的情况 ，meaning you don't care what happen around you, and you become angry. For example, 有一个呃、uh, mild mannered man, he's a good man. He、uh, get on his airplane, found his seat, he sit down. To his surprise, 他看到他旁边 there's a parrot, 一个鹦鹉坐在他的旁边。It's a it's a fake story again, okay? And he tr- he decided to ignore the bird, so he he talked to the flight attendant. Hey, may I have a coffee, please? Just when when he was ordering coffee, 这个 Perry 就说 Hey, sexy, give me that damn whiskey. 这个 Perry 就很 rude， 就跟那个 flight attendant 说话 Okay, few months a few moments later, 这个呃、uh, flight attendant 就 came with the whiskey for the Perry, but she forgot the coffee. Okay, and so. The young man was a little bit upset. I said, "Hey, can I have my coffee?" 结果这个 Perry 他已经 finish 他的 whisky， 就说 ，Hey, stupid! I want another whisky.、Okay. So the flight attendant hurried to get another whisky, and she forgot the coffee again. This time, this young man was very upset. Feels like, okay, maybe、um, I need to use the what the Perry did, right? He said, "Coffee now, or I'll show you who is the boss." Few m- few moments later, a very tall and buff co-pilot came and s- put this guy and the parent open the door and throw them outside of the plane. It's a joke, okay? By the way, <laughs> when they're falling in the sky, the parent said to the guy, "Hey, you know what? You're kind of stupid for a guy who doesn't know how to fly." <laughs> Now this is a joke, okay? Nothing, nothing in life will happen like this, but it shows that. When situation is unfair or unrighteousness, when someone violated your standard, someone crossed the line, you sometimes will enter a low self-awareness stage, meaning you don't care much about your surrounding. You don't care what happened. You don't care about other people. You don't care about the consequence. You enter a low self-awareness state, and that's anger because you don't care what happened. You just want to do something to fix the situation. So the first question: What is anger? Anger again is not a sin. Anger is a response that God gives us, so we have the ability, the desire, and the willingness to react to things that are unrighteousness, that are unrighteous. So that's the first point I want to make. Now, when does anger become bad or sinful? Because anger can become sinful, right? As Ephesians suggested. So the second question is: If anger itself is not a sin, when does it become a sin? So here are three points I want to share. Number one is when the standard becomes a selfish standard. 当这个标准成为一个完全自私的标准 Righteousness supposedly is a God's standard. But we all have our own standard of righteousness. 你们每个人都有一个觉得公义或是公平的标准 And your standard may not be God's standard. Psalm one one nineteen says this. This is supposed to be the standard, right? 因为恶人离弃你的律法，我就非常愤怒 right? It's talking about God's standard, your law. Now, however, this is usually what. I live by, is what you live by. 就是什么呢？不管好人恶人离弃我的律法 ，my standard, then then I will be angry. This is usually what you and I live by. Is we have our own standard of righteousness. Now let's think about Jesus' the anger. Jesus throughout the Bible, I'm not saying he is always angry, 
But there are a lot of moments that he show anger or wrath, right? For example, very famous when he cleansed the temple, right? Mark 11, for example, Jesus went into the temple, cleansed the temple, right? And throw things on the ground. That's an act of anger, right? I mean, you push things, right? You throw things away. Jesus was very angry here, but why was he angry? Yes, Is it for selfish reasons? Did someone offend him? Did someone hurt him personally? No, someone violated God's standard. He was sad and angry for the unrighteous situation, not for himself. In fact, when people did terrible things to Jesus, this is when, people, when Jesus was under trial. Jesus did not commit any crime or any sin, but Jesus was put on trial. The Bible said when he was put on trial, he did not answer or fight back. In fact, even when he was crucified, when people were trying to kill him, when people offended him, people mock at him, Cao Xiao Ta, people laugh at him, people took his clothes, and people was about to kill him, he said, Father, forgive them, because they don't know what they're doing. You know, this is, this is actually ridiculous. Think about it. Okay, let me put this in perspective. Which one would you be more angry at? If people, if you're innocent, people accuse you, you put on trial. Then people took your clothes. People laugh at you. People mock at you. And people want to kill you. And, and finally, they kill you. Are you going to be more angry at that situation? Or are you going to be more angry at, wow, someone is making a lot of money in the Toti Temple. Why do I care? Right? Which one you be more angry at? Which one was Jesus more angry at? What was God's standard? And what is your standard? The second thing is when reaction is not proportional to violation. Sometimes, someone did something very wrong to you. It's very violent. Even by God's standard, it was wrong. They should have not done that, and you feel hurt. But was your reaction proportional to the violation? Right? Because a lot of times, this is, you know, a lot of times when I share with Sharon, you know, Sharon, I feel so angry. I, I, I share the situation, and she's like, okay, so why are you so angry? I was like, can you tell? <laughs> right? This is so obvious. <laughs> but a lot of times when you explain, maybe it's not so obvious. Right? Does that make sense? Because you reacted, it's not proportional to the violation. You think it's right to react this way. But if you, add, if you take a survey, you know, 100 people, maybe 50 people will agree with you, your reaction. Maybe the other 50 will say, that's kind of overreacting. I think that's, that's okay. It's nothing. I wouldn't be offended. Right? You know what I'm saying, right? So the second thing is when your reaction is, goes beyond what it should be. Right? And very, very interesting, the story, in the book of Jonah, Yuanashu. Jonah is a very interesting character. So here's the deal. Jonah was very angry because God actually saved thousands and ten thousands of people, okay? Because God has mercy and love. And Jonah was angry. And God was showing him a message. See, Jonah was sitting under the sun. There's a tree that's covering him. God made that tree die. So Jonah was very hot, and Jonah becomes very angry. God was trying to teach him, you know what, the tree is valuable, just like thousands of people. But Jonah was very angry. Then God asked him, 你觉得你这么angry是合理的吗? Jonah said what? 你知道吗,我为了这个树发怒,以至于死,都是reasonable的. That's actually very interesting. A lot of times we are like that. At that moment, we feel like, I'm so angry, and I have the right. But a lot of times, maybe you don't. Because it's not proportional to the violation that you have received. So in turn, your reaction actually creates more unrighteousness. 就是你的回应其实反而制造出新的不公义,你反而在做伤害别人的事情. In turn, your reaction hurt someone. And this is what the Bible in Proverbs talk about. Proverbs 15, 18. 脾气暴烈的人常常引起纷争, 
Proverbs 29:22 says, 容易发怒的人引起纷争，脾气暴烈的人多有过犯。A hot-tempered person commits many sins. So if you think the situation is unrighteousness, but your reaction, 你的回应 actually did something or you said something to another person and trying to hurt him or her even more, then you did something or someone more unrighteousness. Right, and and sometimes maybe even you know you did that to innocent people. Chen Nu, right? You're angry at someone else, but you did something to to someone who's innocent. So you cause hurt, rejection, disappointment, and you create a vicious cycle. 进入一个恶性的循环 and that's where sin comes in. So anger itself is not a sin, but the Bible tells us that we need to be careful with anger because when we're selfish. Or when your reaction to the unrighteousness is not proportional to the violation, or your reaction causes more unrighteousness, that's where anger becomes sin. I hope I've explained that. So moving on to my final point. Now we all know what what is anger. Where does anger come from? You all know anger can become sin. So the last part is how do I stop it from becoming sin? Now, God, we talk about God shows anger, but anger is not a nature of God. In fact, in the Bible, Bible constantly talk about when Bible describe who our God is. The Bible constantly uses this word, slow to anger, 不轻易发怒 right? In Exodus, and I can show you many, many different verses. In Psalm 30, his anger is just short-lived. In Book of Jonah, it describes God as slow to anger. God, con-、uh, the Bible constantly uses "slow to anger" as a, a nature of God. Is 不轻易发怒的上帝 So we know slow to anger is good. In fact, the Bible also teaches expect us. To have that nature, so the Bible does say we have the capacity to be angry, just like God. But the Bible also encourages us to be slow to anger, just like God. For example, in、uh, Proverbs fourteen seventeen, this actually is,、uh, the original language is quick to anger. Quick to anger 就是 short nostril， 就是鼻子很短。Okay, so the original language 就是 a quick to anger 的人会 act foolishly. Then, in contrast, in、uh, Proverbs fourteen twenty nine, says slow to anger 的人就是 long nostril， 鼻子很长，像大象的人。OK， 就是 that's how the Bible describes， 就是 slow to anger， 就是你的气会比较慢出来。Slow to anger 的人是大有聪明的人。对、right? ，And Proverbs sixteen talk about slow to anger 的人是胜过勇士 ，better than the mighty、okay?。So we talk. The Bible expect you and I to be slow to anger, just like God is slow to anger. There's a boss. Okay, he visits the warehouse. 他就发现有一个 worker， 一个工人，他就坐在地上在划他的 cell phone. The boss gets very angry, but he held it. The second week, 他又去 visit the warehouse. So the same guy was doing the same thing. 又在那边看 cell phone， 在划手机。你说，老板最讨厌人就是 getting lazy， and 在上班的时间在做这些事情，所以 he he became very angry. So he he asked the guy, Hey, how much do you make per week? How how much do you make per month? The guy say about you know twenty five hundred, 两千五百。老板立刻叫他的 secretary 给这个工人 give him twenty five hundred check. Take the money, get out of here. You're fired. 这人就走。老板 was still very angry. Who is His supervisor and which moron referred this person to our company? His secretary said, "Well, you know what? He doesn't work for us. He's just a delivery man." <laughs> Slow to anger. A lot of times it is hard. So the last part I want to talk about the steps. How do we do it? The five steps. I, you know, I it did just it, right. Hawk and Bruce Banner. It reminds me how to control anger, right? So I want to talk about the five steps that we control anger so that it does not become bad. Number one is you consciously acknowledge that I'm angry. 你意识到我是生气的 I am angry. Now you you may say, you know what? This is obvious. 我难道不知道自己在生气吗？我还需要你 
But sometimes it is hard to admit that you're angry, especially for Christians or good people. Sometimes you, you don't want to admit that you're angry because you may think it's bad. So sometimes it is hard. Now, so the first point is only to consciously acknowledge. When you feel that you're angry, the first step is you need to consciously acknowledge that I am angry. Now, remember, anger means you enter a low level of self-consciousness or self-control. So the tip, there are a couple of tips on this. Admit you're angry because it's, you're at a low level. So you can a high level of awareness. One of the tips the experts say is this. You imagine you're watching yourself from third-person perspective. Okay. <laughs> Just, next time you're angry, try it. Next time when you're angry and you're about to do something or say something, imagine you're watching yourself from third-person perspective. Okay, I'm about to say this. I'm about to do this. Now, should I continue? Watch yourself from the third-person perspective because that raises your high awareness of the situation. And another thing you can do is say it out loud. You say, I am angry about this. What am I going to do? That's the exact sentence. Why do you say that? Because it distinguishes you from your emotion that I am angry versus the action that you're going to take. So the two don't have to link together. I am angry, but... What am I going to do? So you need a fine-in, get the emotion is not necessarily linked together. You have a choice on what to do next. So that's the first step. You acknowledge that you are angry by either observe yourself from kind of third person perspective or say out loud that I am angry and what am I going to do next? The second tip is you move on to give yourself a timeout. You got Zantin. If you're a parent, you're very familiar with timeout. Okay? You give your children a timeout, right? And usually we don't think adults need timeout, but as a matter of fact, we adults, we also need timeout. Timeout is to restrain yourself, from an immediate impulsive response, a And that's what the Proverbs is talking about. Proverbs 19:11 讲到人有见识就不轻易发怒. 29:11 讲到愚昧人把怒气尽情发泄，智慧人却抑制怒气. Now, what do we usually do in response to anger? We usually have the two extremes. One extreme is you withdraw or silence, 逃避或是 the other extreme is you burst out, venting, aggressive. Both are destructive to relationship. So, we time out. No, so how do you how do you exercise this time out? Uh, something very simple. You can count to ten, you can count to twenty. Um, for me, this is what Sharon told me. Okay. Uh, you also count to 10 very easy. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, because you already know, right? So if something very useful is you count back from a large number, for example, 200. When you do that, 200, 199, 198, you force your brain to function on the logical part because you need to think, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you don't even have to think. But if you count from a large number, let's say, you know, 988, 987. You're forcing the logical part of your brain to come in effect again, to think logically again. Okay, so you count backwards. Or, and at the same time, you can take a deep breath. So those are the mechanism. Now, when you do time out, you can leave the scene in a peaceful way. Say, maybe you're in the middle of a conversation. Let me pause this. I'll come back to you in five minutes. Say that. Don't just walk away because that's withdrawal. Clearly say, I need a timeout. I'll come back in five minutes or in 10 minutes or an hour. Right? So leave the scene peacefully. 
Then go to do a prayer, for example. Say, God, I'm angry. Someone has offended me. They have done something wrong and help me to react properly. Do a prayer. If you think, if you think singing a worship song helps, then sing a worship song, right? Go online, find a joke, something, okay? Something that, that you can actually work in your time out. Time out is not for you to 我真的很气,越来越气,我就想到他上次做那个 right. Time out is not for you to actually to think more of a bad stuff It's for you to find ways to deal with it And it also helps that in your life If you build a good habit of either meditation about God Constant prayer, talk to Jesus constantly These also help So number two is time out okay. Number three, understand why you're angry So why are you angry? There are different reasons. There are surface reasons, there are root reasons, right? Sometimes it's the content that people said, sometimes the way people said it, sometimes the way they look at you when they said it, sometimes the method that person choose to deliver the message. And why did that bother me? Sometimes because it reminds me of someone else that I hate, it reminds me, I don't know, some, something happened in my childhood years ago, Sometimes it reminds me of someone that I don't like at work or I don't like at school. So, or maybe it's because you were repressed. Maybe it's your childhood trauma or events that you know, kind of shape you or repress yaini. Sometimes it's accumulation of similar experiences. Right, The first time it's okay, but the tenth time it really bothered me. Sometimes it's just because that person is different than me. So why are you angry, right? You need to kind of figure out. So for example, you know, when, when Sharon tells me, hey, how come your friends are always more important to, to, to me? Right? Sometimes, you know, let's imagine Sharon said that, okay? The issue behind that is not about friends, believe it or not. If you read the wrong message, if you think the issue is about friends, then you're wrong. Because the issue is that Sharon feels that she is not important or she is being neglected. She is not loved the way she expects me to. I have violated Tata's standard of righteousness that I need to love her this way. I have violated that. So maybe that's the surface reason. Now maybe there's a deeper reason. Maybe she has insecurity problem. Maybe the issue is I have the issue of not able to show love the way people want me to. Maybe that's the deeper issue on my part. So we need to think about why on the surface and deeper. You know, when uh, Sharon first, when we first got married, um, right? so I put my towel there. Um, the first week, I think, 我就突然发现, I found out the towel was gone. 他就把它拿去洗了. He put it to laundry. I was so angry. Now, for her, she's just doing a normal thing, right? First week of our marriage, right? It's her job to do laundry. So he thinks that after one week, the towel is ready to get washed. So she took it to laundry, right? 去洗那个towel. I got so angry. And I understand why. Because later through our discussion, I found out because, I'll be very honest, I feel that when I live at my home, my mom always tells me what to do. And I don't like people to tell me what to do when I need to wash my towel. And my mom has been doing that to me throughout the whole life. I finally feel like I move out of the house, I have the freedom to decide when do I wash my own towel. And yet, she violates that. She doesn't give me the right. I know it sounds ridiculous, right? But the deep inside of me is because I want to have freedom. And when my freedom is violated, I feel so angry, even though this is a very, very tiny, this is the smallest thing. You shouldn't even fight over it, right? It's nothing to be angry about. But deep inside of me, I feel I'm being controlled. I just want to be free. And I thought I have freedom. So that's the deep inside, the reason why I was angry, right? Now, so a lot of times you need to understand why you're angry. You need to examine the situation. There are different ways you can examine the situation. We talk about that. You can find out the cause. You can find out the root cause. You can talk about, this, is your standard the right standard? Someone violated your standard, but was that the right standard? For example, was my standard of freedom, was that the right standard? 
And you can also assess to what scale you are angry at. This also helps you to communicate, right? So for example, if I tell Simon, hey Simon, I'm kind of angry, I'm kind of at a two, uh, there's something that I need to talk to you, then Simon knows, okay, it's not a big deal. But if I tell Simon, Simon, you know what, I'm at nine, okay? There's something I need to talk to. So he knows. So it helps us to assess the situation, help you to assess the situation. Right. And also you can do self-examination. -exam do you do the same thing? For example, if some people cut you off when you're driving, right? you feel angry. You can ask, do I do the same? Maybe I do. Because a lot of times you're, you're going to just, just justify it. You're going to say, you know what, I do that, but I just do less. Right? Or I do that only when something happens. But the, fa the fact is, you do it. Right? And the fact is that person did it. Maybe he has his reasons, right? So can I give him or her more grace because I do it too? The fourth step is what do I do now? You analyze your options. You can even write down what are the options. Your option can involve these, right? You can show them by venting. Raise your voice. Point your finger, right? Use your hand gesture. You can... Uh, Bring up past failures, right? You can revenge. You can even take a baseball bat and try to hit the person, right? I mean, all these are options, right? Um, or you can just say, you know what? They're just idiot. Not worth my time. That can be an option. You can give them a silent treatment, right? Withdrawal to your iPad, computer, or TV. You can choose to walk out of their life, never talk to them again, disappear. That's how, I, how I'm going to punish you, to show, that, to show you that I'm angry. All these are options, right? So you can analyze your options. The Bible said in, in James, so we are slow to anger, you know, the anger, but God's God, the righteousness. So what is God's righteousness? It has to do with these two questions. The response, is it positive? Is my response constructive? The second question, is it loving? It's my response, loving toward the person that I'm angry at. Because remember, every time when God is angry, he wants to be constructive, and he wants to show his love. He wants to restore the relationship. Are you there to restore relationship? Is it loving? Is it constructive? If you want to be, be loving and constructive, so basically you have two options, basically, as Christians. Number one is you lovingly communicate or confront the issue. 以爱来沟通,像我们这样说的。Right, and this is especially with the people you know, you have a relationship with. You want to rebuke him, confront him. Now, rebuking is not verbal abuse. It's not venting. It includes listening. Maybe it's a misunderstanding. You speak frankly, but you speak kindly. You choose your voice and you choose your words correctly. You're not there to condemn, you're there to restore relationship. The second option, sometimes, there are times that you just cannot communicate. For example, to your 70 or 80 years old parents, it doesn't matter how many times you try to communicate, they're not going to listen to you, right? Some parents, even at 30, 40 years old, they're not going to listen to you, right? Or to your children, there's no way you can communicate, right? Little children, sometimes it's your boss, maybe sometimes your pastor, they're just so, they just don't listen, right? <laughs> Or there, are times, or there are times it's strangers. There's no way you can communicate with them, right? So there are times that you cannot communicate, and this is a time that you just have to, uh, to do the second thing, which is accept by forgiving them. You accept the fact. Now, let me make it very, very clear before I move to my last step. This is not talking about that you're suppressing it. Is you make a conscious choice that you release your anger to God. You give the right to revenge to God. You let God to be in control. You trust that God is loving and God is just, and God will take his action in his time. So this is not for you to suppress it, but you consciously make an effort to say, God, I will let you to be in control, so I choose to forgive. So those are the two options, and maybe you can do both. And number five, you take the constructive actions. Because again, anger, remember I said in the beginning, is for us to react in a positive and loving way to the unrighteousness that happened around us, not in a destructive way. So God gave you the capacity to be angry for you to react to unrighteousness that happened 
around you. But you have to choose it so that you react in a loving and positive way and not in a destructive way. Let's pray. Father, I want to pray for my brothers and sisters. And today we just have one very simple question. And um, obviously it has to do with our commitment and it has to do with how we want to change or how we want to transform ourselves. If today's message speaks to you that you think, God, I need your Holy Spirit to help me with these five steps so that I can deal with my anger better. If that's your prayer, can you raise your hand? I want to pray for you. Yeah, you can raise your hand. Anyone else? Father, I want to pray for everyone, my brothers and sisters. I pray that you help us. In Jesus' name, I pray that you, you help us to take out the destructive response because you have given us the capacity to be angry is for us to react to unrighteousness. But help us to adjust our standard according to your standard. Help us to react in a loving, in a positive and constructive way. Anytime we need your help, may your Holy Spirit jump in to remind us, to give us time out, and to talk to us and to comfort us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.